Welcome back to Kingdom Outcast. Today is episode number 14. I'm Brendan. I'm Greg. I'm Jordan. So in honor of our episode of everything you need to know before Avengers Endgame, we're going to do a three-hour episode today. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> so buckle up. Here we Get go. Get some popcorn. <laughs> so our goal today is just to cover kind of preparing for <coughs> Avengers Endgame. Comes out later this week, which is kind of hard to wrap your mind around. I'm going on Thursday. Jordan, you're going on Friday. Greg, hopefully you're going on Saturday or Sunday. TBD. Yep. So, so everybody tweet Greg your spoiler alerts after you see it. <laughs> I want to know everything about everything the moment you see it, everyone. Yep, Greg, you're gonna have to go off the grid. Uh, you have no idea. <laughs> so, we're gonna cover what essential movies we think that you need to watch beforehand, and then also discuss some fan theories and just kind of prepare for this epic three-hour movie. Which Every I, time anyone says three hour, I go immediately to Gilgan's Island. I, I can't stop it. And now I keep singing that stupid song in my head. Let's talk about the three hours first. Stop saying it. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, the Russo brothers have to say this, but I don't know if you guys saw it, where they said there's not going to be a point in the movie where it's like acceptable to go out to the bathroom, that you're going to miss something if you do that. And of course they do that because they edit it and they think that everything is essential. But, I mean, that is a long time to sit still. I've never seen a Marvel movie with a lull moment of people strolling through a park. It was like, okay, I'll just go you know, use the bathroom real quick. Yeah, that's, a, that's true. I specifically picked out the theater that I am going to see it in that because it has the reclining uh, kind of sofa type chairs the lazy boy t- type chairs because sitting in just a regular movie theater seat for three hours seems like torture to me. So I'm going to be kicked out, kicked back, have my feet up, uh, lean back. Hopefully I, I, I'm not planning on like drinking anything for like the five hours prior to the movie. So I have nothing in my system. <laughs> Less pressure on your bladder. So yeah. you're leaning back. Yeah. You're going to have to fast before you go. In. <laughs> like, can we like, Get like a, a bedpan or something set up. I mean, that might be necessary. Uh, the reclining chair with a little flap in the bottom of it. Part of me is like, oh my gosh, three hours. But the other part of me is like, make it four, make it five. Like, if you can entertain me for that long, let's do it. You know, they did say that the reason it's so long is because this is 20 years, not 20 10 years, ten years or 10 plus years of movies being wrapped up. It's 20 something movies. That's what yes, I was getting at. 22 from. movies. 22 movies, 10 plus years of, of movies being wrapped up into one single movie. So they said they had to put all this stuff in there to wrap all of that up. I do. I have one thing. Mel brought it up to my attention last night. I did not think about this previously. Before Infinity War came out, did they or did not they not say between the two movies it was going to be the largest amount of characters put into the movies? Like it was just going to be like 30, 40 different characters or something something to that tune. Where are all these characters? They're dust. No, no, no. I'm being very serious. Like, what, like where are all these new like characters that they didn't release? I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many characters, but... We haven't been introduced to any like wild, crazy new characters or like these villains being brought back to life or anything like that. I'm yet. just waiting for Deadpool to just casually stroll through the background. <laughs> I would not doubt that there is some form of Deadpool Easter egg in this movie that they went back and put back in. I don't know. I think it's wishful thinking, but God, how great would that be? It's just like during the final battle, Deadpool just kind of like strolls through the like background. he's like sitting on a fence or just watching them from the background. <laughs> but but yeah. seriously, where are all these characters? I mean, the first thing I thought of was like the X-Men characters, but the Fox merger deal, the timeline doesn't sync up. Right. They couldn't have used those when they were filming this yeah. movie. Yeah, because the movie's been completed. They filmed it at the same time as Infinity War. They shot it basically back to back. Right. So, so if you go that, to the you logic, think that's probably two and a half, three years ago that they filmed yeah. some of this footage. So, so if you go back to the logic of 
if they're stuck, I know we're going to talk about this, if they're stuck in the time loop or they're going to find the stones, are they going to meet different in their, some, some of these worlds, they're not going to survive. They're, they're, they have, they never came back. So some of these worlds are post Avengers. Are there, could there be other teams that are just hanging out in these other worlds? Is that I, how we're going to meet new characters? I did read a theory about that. That, um, and if you listen to our last episode uh, talking about kind of the Disney Plus series and the Hawkeye series specifically, uh, that character, Kate Bishop, eventually goes on to lead the Young Avengers, and it's rumored that the Young Avengers will be one of the new teams, uh, one of the new franchises that Disney is going to start after Endgame. I read a theory where we all assume that this is going to involve time travel of some sort. What if they go to the future, Mm -hmm. and in the future they meet the new team of Avengers that kind of was inspired by them long after obviously they would travel uh, to a point long after they've all died yeah basically i was and i took it like the some of those worlds where they went to go beat thanos and thanos they never came back yeah so i mean it could be with the time travel that they go meet future versions of themselves Mm -hmm. uh future avengers teams past avengers teams you can never know i mean a lot can happen in a time travel movie, which we don't know for sure that's what the movie's going to be about, but it's heavily rumored that it will involve time travel. So, you know, they, they could travel several thousand years into the future or wherever it is and, and meet new versions of the Avengers teams. Uh, and basically they could be asking, hey, how did we beat Thanos? Because they would know, that, or do we beat Thanos or however they do it. Because in the comics they actually do <clears throat> Hickman's run – in 2012, 2012 to 2015 or something like that, uh, where he essentially kills the multiverse, he explores going forwards and backwards and meeting new teams, meeting a future Thor, uh, meeting in 2099, there's a uh, female Captain America, but she's like subconsciously Captain America where she doesn't know, she lives her life a normal person and something turns on and she becomes Captain America. Werewolf Captain America. Essentially, yeah. And uh, so there's they do explore different alternate future teams in that run. My theory on just changing Jordan's, the one that he read just a little bit, is that the current team of young people in the comics is not, they kind of got away from the name Young Avengers because they had different moral they came into a moral conflict with the avengers the older adults where the older adults were like punch 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 the kids were like well won't we you know talk about it won't we you know they're more concerned with millennial avengers. no they no not kidding yes thank you they're more concerned with feelings i can't get on board with that. right but they still have great adventures and they call themselves the champions what if they run into a champions team in a future storyline where they're and they actually kind of hostile towards the Avengers because they see the champions see the Avengers left them but never came back and they felt abandoned by the Avengers. So they had to band them together themselves to defend Earth because the Avengers weren't there to do it. And that's a good way. If you, if this is how I took it, if that's in the future, if you go back to the past, those people are still going to become those people. So that's a good way to introduce those characters and then come back to the present and then slowly find out those, find those people and they still become those characters. So it's still a good way to introduce, here's my powers here. I got my, how I got my power. So it's still a good way to backtrack and then make future movies with those new people. Yeah. it It's, it's all very interesting. And I think, there's certainly going to be some. Surely, there's going to be some unexpected characters that that were that are going to be unveiled. I mean, in one of the theories that we've talked about in the past, that does not include any time travel, would be the one where Loki is disguised as the Hulk, and so Banner is off somewhere doing some side mission. and And we discussed in the past, maybe he's assembling a team to bring back. Yeah. So it, it's it'll be interesting. 
to see how it is. One of the past trailers, and you guys might have to remind me because I'm a little fuzzy on it, but there is a scene where I know it's Captain America, Iron Man, and I think Thor are all standing and facing off against Thanos. Yep. So it'd be interesting if, like, the three guys. That's why I, yeah, I point, actually pointed out to me. I'm like, it started with the three. It may end with the three. Yeah. So I, I thought that was super exciting, especially when you just see, like, the back of their legs and then the cape fly. Oh, gosh. I couldn't. It, I was. I, a lot of people thought that was Doctor Strange. But like, it, it's Thor. It's Thor. Yeah. I felt, yeah, I felt dumb for, I was looking at it for forever, trying not to read the comments below on Twitter to see, like, who is this third guy? Because obviously Captain America and Iron Man are, are distinguishable. Yeah. <coughs> so one thing I'm going to cut that out. Shut up. <laughs> one now thing. we have more to cut out, Jordan. <laughs> Greg one. keeps coughing into the mic. Yep. So one thing I do want to make sure that we cover, and we did this for Captain Marvel as well. Besides the obvious answer of all of them, which... The answer is all of them. (laughs) Which movies, maybe assuming that everybody's caught up to this point, which movies would you suggest re-watching to re-familiarize yourself with some of these storylines heading into Endgame? But you need to know that Steve Rogers and Tony really hate each other. To a point where they're not talking to each other, so you need to watch Civil War to understand that in the trailer when they reach in and he says, "Do you trust me?" and then Captain America says, "Of course I do," and then they essentially bro hug. You need to understand how powerful and amazing that is to see when the last time we saw them on camera together, they tried to kill each other. So to me. I think Iron Man 1, the first Iron Man, is important. Oh, he's going back to the beginning. You, there's 22 movies. <laughs> yeah. That is true. I mean, if you, if you think about it, I think you would need to watch all of the or origin movies, if, if that's what you want to call them. Um, you know, the thing is, The Incredible Hulk is probably not necessary. I wouldn't worry with so, the Hulk solo movies. They have nothing the, to do with it. There's only one. Um I thought there was no. There's just the Incredible Hulk. You're thinking of the Eric Bana one, which yeah, is not the, part of this universe. Was it Angley or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I think you need to watch at least Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, the First Avenger, uh, then who? Ant Man. Um, actually, Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp. You need to be don't familiar seem, with Quantum Realm. They don't seem important at at the beginning, but as we get closer to Endgame, they, they become more important in, in what they do. Doctor Strange is important. Uh, that introduces an Infinity Stone. Mm-hmm. Um, Guardians. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. I guess that one's just called Guardians of the Galaxy, but yeah. that one introduces an Infinity Stone. Yeah, Volume yeah. 2 doesn't really ha, is not really essential. It's a good movie, but it's it's not really essential. Spider-Man, Homecoming, I would say that's not essential. Uh, just because we saw him introduced in Civil War and uh, then again in Infinity War. Uh, Black Panther, really good movie, pro- probably not essential. No, because he's already introduced in Civil War. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what would So here's a controversial one. So the Reality Stone was introduced in Thor The Dark World. Yes, but uh, it is. What, what? I think, without a doubt, the worst movie. If you can power through it, I mean, it does introduce that. And the thing I think about, the worst part, though, about that, even in the story, they don't treat it like it's an Infinity Stone. Well, they don't even acknowledge it as an Infinity Stone until the post-credit scene. Yeah, where they spoil alert for well, those you haven't seen it. They uh, it has Sif and. Um, one of the other uh, Warrior Three, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, Volstock, that's the name. Oh, it is. Uh, they have Sif and Volstock taking the ether to the Collector, which pops up again in Guardians of the Galaxy, and uh, asking him to store uh, store the ether and, and hide it there. And he he questions, you know, why don't you just put it in Odin's vault? And they respond, said it's not smart to keep two Infinity Stones in the same place. So that does that's the first time they're really ever. Um, mentioned as an Infinity Stone. 
uh, the Tesseract, of course, is in Odin's vault, and then the, the ether there is with the Collector. But then again, in Guardians of the Galaxy, he gets the Power Stone as well. Right. So, one that I'm curious to see what your thoughts are for someone who maybe hasn't seen Captain Marvel. So, of course, at the time that this episode so it's a dropping, very large rock they're laying under. <laughs> yep, we're releasing this on Monday. Avengers Endgame comes out on Thursday. Should people rush to the theater in the next three to four days and see Captain Marvel before Endgame? No. You don't think so? It, uh, it does explain where she's been. Well, actually, it doesn't. No, it explains how she got there, but not, where she she, got her, yeah. but not where she's been. So it's... No. Yeah. I can agree with that. The only thing is it could explain things about Fury that sure yeah it, it gives good background on fury if you're looking for uh explanation of what he's been doing and how why he did it but essential to this story post credit scenes that's about the only thing you really need to look up you can get those on youtube exactly mm-hmm. post credit scenes with her are about the only thing that you really spoil or that you need to understand for that to me i'm trying to Obviously, the three Avengers movies prior mm-hmm. to this, just Avengers, Age of Ultron, and then Infinity War, you would need to watch those three. Because Ultron, ex- Ultron, you get Vision and stuff like that, so you really need to have seen that. I mean, to understand why he's important to the story and why, why he had a stone in his forehead. Complete tangent. Who's your least favorite Avenger? Because mine's Vision. Vision. He gets on my nerves so much. He's a... Android, yeah, but, but he's so much cooler in the comics, though he really is. I I was just thrown out of there. I like, I don't even mind that Hawkeye doesn't have any powers, because neither does Black Widow. They're just like really in like in tuned, enhanced, trained assassins, and I, I think that's just the coolest thing that they are on the same level as everybody else, but they have no powers to a point. On the level, same level. Yeah. They're the same team, and they don't have any powers. But Vision, just the way they did it, I just don't know. I just, I don't like it. I don't like him. Well, I love I mean, Paul Bettany. I just don't care for the he's, character. He's obviously incredibly powerful because he uh, obviously has an Infinity Stone in his forehead. He is uh, worthy because he picks up Thor's hammer oh, yeah, and hands it to him. him like a paperweight. <laughs> and, uh, and he's so incredibly powerful. But then he's so emotionless. Like there, there is, he's just, like I, said, I mean, he's, he's an android, basically. But he, he they, wants to be so emotional, but he's so emotionless. Yeah. So like the beginning of Infinity War, I, it's hard to watch that part with him and uh, Wanda because it, it, he's such a, a girl. I don't know. It, it, <laughs> That's what I'm interested to see, that WandaVision show that we're getting on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Like I'll, I'm interested if I can make it through it, if Vision is as irritating as he is in the movies. I don't know. So one thing that we've talked about in the past about is that Thanos could not be the real main villain of this movie have you guys read anything more about that to further affirm that or maybe dismiss it more or is it still completely up in the air i think it's so up in the air i I haven't really seen like we saw that initial ideas and thoughts but they're like oh here's the top 10 but like but that was it it was just people throwing out like oh what, what about this but there's nothing really concrete to say yes or no to that well, I think Either that's, way. you know, they've been so secretive about the movie. We still don't really know any plot details about the movie. Uh, we have a general idea, but nothing concrete yet. Uh, it comes the, out in a week and a half. Yeah, we still the, don't know anything. The The latest trailer TV spot that they put out, and it's the one that Brendan mentioned earlier with the Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor walking towards uh, Thanos – there is a voiceover from Thanos that basically says, despite all your failures, you couldn't accept it and look where it got you back here in front of me or something like that. So, I mean, to me, before that, we really hadn't seen anything from him. 
in, in any of the trailers. You saw his hand walking by, or he was walking through a field, and you saw like his hip and his hand, and that was it. And you hadn't heard him talk or anything like that. Um, so, I mean, that that little voiceover does kind of confirm to me that he is one, pretty much a big part of the movie, but I would not be surprised in the least bit if they introduce some new threat either towards the end of the movie or in a post credit scene or whatever because, like I said, this this movie will reset the entire MCU. They, they have basically confirmed that. Um, so where do you go after post Thanos? Where who who is the big bad? And I think this would be a perfect opportunity for them to introduce that new big threat that whoever's left over at at the end of the movie has to battle. Uh, you know, moving forward. I th- I I really do think a part of the what we're talking about characters being introduced and whatnot. I think this is going to be the great way to the people of Earth are not going to be the not the only ones who are looking for the gauntlet and the uh, and Thanos. That there's going to be other because you see other worlds. Don't don't you get previews of other worlds where where people got snapped? Or you just just the Earth. Uh, they showed Gamora's home world in Infinity War. Okay, right. uh, but that I think that was the only one. They had mentioned that he had been to several other planets, but the only one that you really saw was Gamora's okay. planet. So if he snaps and he removes half of the universe's population, the people of Earth are, are not going to be the only ones who know that it was Thanos. They're not going to be the only ones who are looking for the gauntlet and for Thanos. So this is a great way to re- introduce new worlds, new factions, new people, new races, new everything. And what if someone wants to gauntlet more? What if someone fights them over it? It's a good way to bring in a new plot point of someone else, a big bad, looking for the gauntlet because he wants to restore his people. So it, and then they can go on to be the villain in future movies. So it really does. It comes at a price, and it, I think it's kind of cool that they can or can use this to introduce new people. What exactly, when you say that this will, like, put an end to this era in the MCU, what exactly do you think they mean by that? There's not a lot of the core people who are not going to be there. I mean, I, I think we pretty much know that Chris Evans is done with Captain America. Mm-hmm. Uh, his contract is up. Um, I think he's wanting to move on to do new things. I think. Marvel and the MCU are wanting to explore new new characters, stuff like that. Uh, you know, Robert Downey Jr. is not exactly young. No. I mean, he's in his 50s. Uh, Paul Rudd, surprisingly. Paul Rudd is 50, 50 years old. Yeah. yeah, Paul Rudd is in his 50s also. Let, he looks amazing. Let's go by that, yeah. yeah. Um, but, I mean, obviously, as as you make these movies and you go on for, you know, a decade, you're, these actors get older and... They, um, you know, obviously they've all had a wonderful time and, and, you know, owe a lot of their careers to uh, the MCU, but uh, eventually I think it's time to move on, and I think the MCU kind of feels the same way, that uh, they want to introduce more characters, expand uh, expand the universe, and, and do everything like that. Um, that's not to say that some of these characters can't pop up again in future movies, you know, but I don't think they want to be tied to the franchise and, and obligated to produce. I mean, how many movies has Robert Downey Jr. showed up in as Tony Stark? I mean, it's been mm-hmm. six, seven, eight movies, something like that. Not more. Yep. I mean, it's he, he obviously loves playing Tony Stark, and he is perfectly cast as Tony Stark. But uh, eventually, you know, it's, it's, it is time to move on. But there, there has to be – obviously, we know from some of the upcoming films – some of these people who have been around for a while are continuing on. Like Scarlett Johansson is Black Widow. Tom Holland. Tom Holland, of course, but he's really young. And he hasn't been there really from the beginning like Black no. Widow has. Right. Yeah. I mean, they did confirm the Black Widow solo movie. Um, so she, she'll be sticking around at least for a little bit. I wonder if maybe they will transition characters like her and maybe Tony Stark and and so and to more of an advisory role mm-hmm. uh for a new team uh kind of like Nick Fury is right now where 
Um, he's not in every movie, but uh, he still pops up from time to time to kind of lead the team or whatever it is. Um, so I wonder if they could do that possibly with it. Well, they uh, in the comics after Civil War II, uh, which faces off Iron Man and Captain Marvel, uh, she deals a what should have been a death blow to Tony, and he goes unconscious, and he doesn't ever wake up. But he into like a contingency plan or something like that. I could be off base on how it happens. His consciousness is turned into an AI, and he turns into an advisor advisory role with a lot of stuff as an AI. Interesting. And he just shows up a little blue Tony, just kind of kind of, and he drinks a lot. He's like a drunk AI. So he's kind of like Cortana from Halo. Yes. And so, uh, so eventually, the AI figured out how to create a new body, and that's how he's back in the comics. Anyway, blah 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 blah. I've I've brought this up on the show before, but this is kind of. I think a lot of people think Captain America is going to die. Yeah, I think it's too obvious for his for the character. I think the Russos are going to throw us a curveball, and I think it's going to be Tony Stark that sacrifices himself. I think Captain America is going to use the Time Stone to go back back in time so he can live his life with Peggy. Yep. I could either see Iron Man, Tony Stark, dying or retiring because Pepper may or may not be pregnant. We're not sure about that. Yeah. Um, I think that Thor is going to leave with Valkyrie to go rebuild Asgard because at the end of Ragnarok, uh, Asgard was completely destroyed no longer in existence. And then I think uh, Banner will use the reality stone to uh, reverse the effects of the gamma radiation that he got to turn himself into the Hulk. Do you think... Okay, if you go like that, there's different versions of Banner and the Hulk. There's Dr. Hulk, where he is not a bumbling idiot as the Hulk, and he actually has the smarts of Banner, but in Hulk form. That you go you go that way, where he doesn't want to be in fear of the angry monster, where he can still have his powers as Hulk, but be in control of it as Banner. I don't know. I mean, they they put out toys of Hulk in one of the space suits or quantum realm suits, whatever you want to call them. Um, so I don't. Obviously, there has to be some kind of intelligence there for them to be able to rein him in and get him to go along with one of these missions. So, uh, not just, you know, complete rage monster. Right. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, there's a lot of different routes they could go, uh, and we really have no clue which one they're going to take. Which is so exciting. But uh, we got three hours to sit there yeah! and figure it all out. <laughs> I told Catherine that. We just need to book it like back to back. And if you need to take a bathroom break, you know, you just leave and then you come back and you finish the movie off later. So you literally don't miss anything. You say, all right, I left at the one hour and 57 minute mark. I have to come right back in at this point. Oh, no, absolutely not. But it would be killing you for that time to not know. Absolutely not. I couldn't do it. One thing I think... Just like talking with other people, and some you can you can sense this a little bit online. A lot of people are upset about like that they've announced future movies of people who got caught up in the snap. So far from home, I just feel like it's not going to be as obvious as there's going to be some twist as to how these people come back. They didn't hire a what seventeen year old Tom Holland or whatever he is. To play Spider-Man and then kill him two movies in. If you didn't know that, go ahead and just put your head back in the sand because, you know, clearly you're not paying attention. Well, I mean, Feige actually came out and said that there will be no more Marvel movie announcements until after Far From Home comes out. Right. Um, so, no, while we can all speculate that there is going to be a Black Panther 2, because guess what? They've hired the director for Black Panther 2. Same thing with <laughs> Doctor Strange 2. They have already you know signed on the director. But just because they've done that kind of stuff doesn't mean the movie's ever going to be made. Right. We can all basically assume that the movie is going to be made. But they, he said there will be no official announcements for any Marvel movie 
until after Far From Home comes out. Interesting. So we can speculate all we want. I mean, obviously the writing's on the wall that these movies are going to be made and and that these characters are going to come back to life. But as far as an official announcement from Marvel, we're not getting any for it until at least midsummer. I think most of that just has to do with the new characters that they'll introduce in Infinity uh, in in Endgame. Yeah. I think some of them are going to get solo movies. Yeah. So you can't say, "Oh, this is our lineup" when you haven't even introduced the characters yet. Yeah. Yeah, I just like I have one guy at work who who just constantly complains about, well, I hate that they've already spoiled it that Spider-Man lives and that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is coming out so you know that Gamora most likely comes back. Nope. And it's like, you don't, I mean, you know that about Spider-Man, but I can guarantee you're going to be shocked with how they come back. And you I, don't know that Gamora is coming back for Volume 3. Right. Yeah. That is no, it's actually no guarantee that any of those Guardians are going to be in Volume 3 because if anyone knows anything about the comics, that's a rotating cast. Always and is. At the end of volume two, they did introduce a new team of guardians. Yeah. If you remember, still Lesher Stallone was one of them. And yeah. That was the randomly, comics original. Yeah. Version, I mean, that yeah. was the original team, but it just shows that there is more than one team of guardians out there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, but even, we can all come on. Well, I know. They're not going to. Chris Pratt is Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, even adding Mantis to the team. Like, yeah. just because you took. You added Mantis. Just because you like Lost Gamora doesn't mean you have to bring her back. You can add another character in there. Yeah, agreed. I I think that's just my point is that it doesn't easy. spoil anything that you didn't logically have a mind to figure out. Yeah, agreed. It it's, it, oh, it spoiled it. It didn't spoil anything. Use your head. <laughs> <laughs> at me. I don't care. <laughs> At Beta Ray Greg on Twitter. Jeez. <laughs> so be sure to tweet them your in, uh, in-game spoilers. Yes, Steve. please. Uh, the moment you see it, I want to know everything. <laughs> How mad would you actually be? I would be furious. <laughs> <laughs> at, uh, the, all post-credit scenes at Beta Ray Greg. Just go ahead and let me know. Since the moment you see it, I'm gonna record it and send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be kicked out of theater. At that point, I mean, you've already seen the whole thing. <laughs> So, uh, what else are you guys excited about? I mean, what other possibilities are out there? Uh, it's really endless. Uh, I'm excited for the introduction of more spacefaring like races that we haven't seen. Because if you're gonna like, you have the Shi'ar Empire. You, I think I'm more excited about the Shi'ars. If you introduce the X-Men into this world, the Shi'ar are an absolute must because the leader of the Shi'ar and uh, Professor X have a little something going on. Isn't uh, isn't that what Dark Phoenix is about? Uh, she's involved with it, yes. Okay. Yeah, the the Shi'ars are involved with it. So it it uh, it so if you introduce one, you can definitely introduce the other but you can do it one at a time like if you do the shyars this time you can bring in the x-men and then have them meet and it's great stories and that's easily done so one one thing to think about obviously the fox merger was probably a little bit happened too late uh for them any of the x-men or fantastic four or any of those characters to make it in in game However, remember in the first Avengers movie, they went back and shot a post credit scene like two weeks before the movie came out. And all it was was the shawarma scene with them sitting around uh, you know, at the restaurant. Do you think it's possible we get a post credit scene that hints towards the X-Men or introduces the X-Men into the universe that they just recently shot? Two weeks ago. Absolutely. Yes. No, absolutely. Even then that one post credit scene after, uh, it's one of the earlier ones when uh, they went to go recruit Wolverine and he tells them, you know, blank, blank you. That's in the middle of the movie. 
At the end, no, that's at the end of oh, it was it in the movie. I was yeah. thinking it was a post credit scene. No, it was at the okay. end. Okay, it is actually. But so, I mean, you know, they, they've done stuff like that before. They they introduce and like kind of put in a little oh oh look at this and just slid it in. So I mean, it could be as simple as something happening where someone talking off screen, but you know who it is. Yeah, I mean, obviously uh, Hugh Jackman is done playing Wolverine. We assume. We assume. Uh, they're going to recast, obviously, if they do introduce the X-Men into the MCU. I'm not sure they would want to do it that early with uh, new, mut- new Mutants and Dark Phoenix still having to come out. But what if it's uh, somebody, you see them like, walking from the back, uh, all you see is their hand, and uh, all of a sudden claws come out. Yeah. And that's it. That confirms X-Men. That confirms that the X-Men are part of this universe now confirms wolverine you don't know who's playing them because all you see is their hand or something like that uh but that could be a quick scene that they could shoot get edited up and and put into the movie uh within just a couple weeks even if the post credit scene is four people getting onto a spaceship and then one going all right uh mr grim uh like pilot grim take us out and hey look fantastic four like it's it's easy to to slip in something like that. Yeah. They get on there, all their masks are down. You don't see anyone. There's four people, and then someone calls someone by their last name. Ta da! Fantastic Four. I think that would go over a lot of people's heads, though. If they just use that, well, because or if they called him like Mister like Richards or something like that, yeah. or, or like Storm, if they named off their last names. I ah, like Fantastic Four. But, I mean, that's something that they could do quickly. Yeah, I, exactly. I doubt that'll happen just because new. Uh, New Mutants and Dark Phoenix still have to come out in theaters. Uh, well, so I don't think they if would If you do Fantastic it. Four, it wouldn't be a... Fantastic issue. Four would be a possibility yeah. because... God, this movie's been such a train wreck. I know, but here's, here's the thing. You can correct it all with a awesome 15-second clip. And then wipe the slates. Yeah. Like, this, this, I mean, this is your opportunity. Think about it. I just hope that the MCU doesn't get into something like that we've talked about with the X-Men where they like make mistakes and go down a path and realize, oh, this isn't the path we wanted to. Actually, this is an alternate universe. Let's fix it over here. I just hope we never get to that point. Yeah, Fox's handling of the X-Men universe has been very poor. Mm. I mean, there there have been some really good movies that have come out of it. Uh, you know, X-Men was really good. X2 was really good. Uh, I really liked... Days of Future Past and uh, First Class. I thought those were pretty good. Yes. Apocalypse was a little iffy. I liked it, but I could see they made him into more like this fanatical religion like leader, yeah. like some like crazy person on tell like TV, like trying to sell you something. Uh, I he wasn't as villainous as I wanted him to be. Yeah. Uh, the the Wolverine movies Origins was. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah. The Wolverine, I thought that was all right. It was decent. I like the Wolverine. Logan yeah. was one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. Yeah. I thought Logan was great. But overall, the handling that Fox has done of the of the X-Men universe has, has been very poor. And they it looks like they just like, oh, crap. Um, yeah, we screwed this one up. So time travel. Let's fix everything. Because even in if you bring in the... Ooh. Okay, if you don't have Wolverine in a post credit scene, you could have X twenty three. You could have like a little girl walking by or a teenage girl walking by and then two claws come out. Yeah. They could do a lot of stuff. Because that would have a young character instead of like, you know, granted I realize that Wolverine doesn't age, but Hugh Jackman does. I've mentioned it to you guys in the past. Did you ever get a chance to listen to Wolverine the Long Night podcast? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend it. And again, it's one of those things that because I'm not, I don't have the full like comic book understanding. I'm sure there's so many things and references that I missed. Right. But even just the plot of that podcast is incredible. I'll check it out. Hey, free plug. Yeah. Have y'all seen the rumors? Obviously, if they introduce the X Men, Wolverine's going to be part of them. Have you seen the rumors that either Zach Efron or Daniel Radcliffe as Wolverine? Oh, stop <laughs> it. <laughs> just I mean, stop. You, I, th- I think they're just fun internet rumors, nothing behind them. But could you imagine either no. one of those players? Daniel Radcliffe would have to bulk up 
Big time. Uh, but he the, thing, to grow with the thing about Daniel Radcliffe, though, Wolverine is typically a very short character, a short, yeah. stocky character. Daniel Radcliffe is pretty short. And if he He'd just have to bulk on, up. He throwed on some muscle, maybe. Yeah. But, I don't uh, think it'll happen, but it's just fun stuff. I, I there's two, uh, two teams on Earth. Th- yeah, we'll go with two. That I think would be fun to introduce. You have the Winter Guard in Russia. They're essentially, they're like almost character for character versions of the Avengers. You have a guy who's in an iron suit. You get yeah, it's you have a guy who's a bear instead of a Wolverine. It's just it's literally a character for character, but they're vicious as a you know what of course you would think Mother Russia would produce. Is they're just a vicious team. Is the Winter Soldier part of them? No, makes sense. It would make sense. Uh. And then in Canada, Alpha Flight. And they have a short, stocky guy that reminds you a lot of Wolverine, but he uh, he tumbles. Mm. He, I, I, don't, I, I don't know Pucks is actually his powers, but I think he, I don't think you can hurt him or something like that. But he'll hit a lot of things. He'll run and like tuck in and roll. And then, yeah, it's, it's interesting. So he's Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> it it, it kind of reminds you of, yeah. <laughs> And then there's a Sasquatch, of course. This is very Canadian. So that's Sabretooth. Yeah, and it, it's very interesting, but Alpha Flight is really cool, and Alpha Flight is involved with eventually with Captain Marvel uh, when they take over the space station. It becomes the Alpha Flight space station, but they're historically separate, very separate. And at one point, Wolverine was a part of Alpha Flight, hmm. or Alpha, whatever they were. Yeah, Alpha Flight. I just want them to bring back... X Force from Deadpool Two. You mean the thirty seconds of X Force that we had? It was so great. <laughs> it was the before they all died. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, but uh, I think adding those two teams into the mix, I mean, that's that's more characters. It's adding the champions, the teenagers, adding Alpha Flight, adding the Winter Guard. You can have movies that are based on Earth and still have big bad guys but you could also have new characters introduce planetary ones uh, that would be cool for space faring movies in like in villains it it's it is endless this movie could have the most endless possibilities and it's introduce everything for the next another 22 movies i know little to nothing about this um but one of the rumored movies that is coming out post in game is the Eternals, and yeah. Angelina Jolie has apparently signed on to play a lead role in the Eternals. I don't know anything about them, but are they somebody that you could see popping up in End Game to being introduced? Post credit scene during the movie. Post credit scene maybe, but in the movie no. Um, I think it would be too much to go back and fill in. And people aren't going to um, immediately recognize it. Yeah. I, I think if you're going to end credit this one, it's going to be something that gets everyone pumped and excited for the future. That, but something that everyone will be able to recognize, like X Men, or some version of that, or Fantastic Four. I think that's the direction you need to go in that people are going to understand. Uh, something like the Eternals, super excited about, but it's not something you're going to be able to slip in with everyone knowing. Because hmm. even I, I, I know very little. Yeah. Do you think? Oh, if, actually, no, I, I take I, I, I take this up. I don't take it back, but I can't take it back. The there are a, the Titan Eternals, and there are actually a, a group of Eternals that left Earth. And they settled on Titan, and that's actually the people that Thanos was born to. His mother was in a th- Titan Eternal, which is how he's so powerful and like. Is monstrous. Derek Henry his dad? It's possible. It's the Titans. Yeah. yeah, I get that. He's a big dude. Get that. Thank you. Yeah, so many Nashville references. <laughs> <laughs> we live in Nashville. We, that, this is all we know. <laughs> so it, you do have that that connection to this movie if you go with the Eternals because that's his lineage 
is the Eternals. I think there's a very good chance that at least half the theater will leave Endgame in tears. Oh, yeah. Crying at some point yeah. during the movie. And I won't say that I won't be one of them. Catherine and I talked about this last night. Think about the lineup of the movies that are coming out and how many tears are going to be shed in each of them. Mm-hmm. So you've got Endgame now. And may you have Aladdin. That probably won't. It shouldn't evoke many tears. But in June, you've got Toy Story 4. Oh, which is a blubber fest. Definitely going to do that. July, you have Lion King. Seeing Mufasa die in HD. Again. It's really going to be a pain. <coughs> and then go on a break for a little while. I don't suspect Frozen will make you cry. I guess we don't know. But then in December, you'll have Star Wars. Which will, yeah, no, definitely probably invoke some tears. Disney, just, just going for it, just... For the jugular. Yeah, go for the jugular. Like, yeah. Disney, like, feeds off your, like, your money and your tears. Your money and your tears. (laughs) Disney wants two things your money and your tears. Possibly a little blood. (laughs) How many mothers have died in a Disney movie? Countless. Okay. Did he have, like, uh, like, did his mom die at a young age? Is that why uh, Walt just, like, killed every mother? No. Don't think so. Hmm. You sure had a thing for it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of <laughs> passed on parents. Uh, <laughs> Isn't that the way to get the most emotional response out of someone? Yeah. I mean, he's not I, John Wick. Uh, it, it's a natural kill this puppy. Yeah. It's. Uh, have either of you seen Dumbo? Now it's been a couple weeks. I have not. Nope. I'm assuming you don't have plans to see it. Nope. I'll catch you on Disney Plus. Oh, I'm not. Plug. Gonna, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I would be. Remiss. I don't think you need to. Yeah. I've seen the movie. Well, that's true, but it is a different story. Okay. It's. I'm going to be honest. I did not care for it in the least bit. Oof. Catherine. That's rough. Catherine had the lowest expectations possible. I believe. She did say. She enjoyed it. She didn't regret spending two and a half hours in the movie theater to see it. I had slightly higher expectations, and I it it failed me. And you went to the office looking for your money back? Not quite that, but it just... I've seen a lot of mixed reviews on it. People seem to either love it or hate it, with the exception of Catherine, who just kind of, eh, it was all right. <laughs> I think it's it's all based on your expectations. To me, I thought Danny DeVito was great. I thought Colin Farrell was good. I thought Michael Keaton was awful. What is he in it? He's like the, the ring owner ring. of the circus. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just thought everything he said was like cringy. Didn't you never understood like his motivation? I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of people who completely disagree. But we did promise on Twitter that we'd at least say something about Dumbo, so that's it. Now we'll move on. I just I don't I don't think either of you will ever watch it to be honest. I don't I I know I won't watch it ever. It just It seems like Disney's plan the last couple of years has been, hey, you remember all these old animated movies that we have? Watch this. Let's redo it with CGI. And realistic looking CGI and this was I the, think it does get stale after a little while. I was I've been a huge Tim Burton fan for forever. I mean, going back to Nightmare Before Christmas, one of my favorites of all time. I like a lot of the other stuff as well. He kind of lost me at Alice Through the Looking Glass. He's completely lost me now at Dumbo. He's just gone off the deep end. I can see that. How was the pink elephant scene though? That was cool. I will say the nods to the original were cool. But the story just like fell apart in multiple places and you never really understood it. And I was sitting there at about an hour and a half in like, please end this thing. That's that's so weird that it was end up being that bad. I mean, and that, there's other people who completely disagree, but. Well, I trust me, if I watched it, I would agree with you. Yeah. I just, I, I just know that. Sounds like a good Disney Plus movie. Yep. So, 
we'll probably give you think it's fair we'll give everybody another week off before we do our end game episode so we don't spoil anything beforehand similar to what we do with captain marvel yeah absolutely yeah you got a week to see it and then i had no holds barred yep and then we will be back next week and i think is that when we're going to do our extinct attractions draft yeah why not i think that'd be fun a draft or just a discussion probably discussion probably not to, un, un, enough to do a draft yeah i don't i we get we we're talking about it last night i think we could come up with enough to have a lengthy discussion but i'm not sure if we'd have enough to like go into you'd pick this i pick this i agree with that so we'll work out the kinks of that we'll be back with that next week then the week after that we'll do in game perfect so if you guys want to connect with us and keep up with us as we're going to see these movies <laughs> over the next couple of weeks and connect with us on twitter at k outcast pod the link to that will be in our show notes as well yeah thank you guys for listening and we will catch up with you next week and don't forget to spoil everything for me at beta ray greg thank you you're really gonna yeah that. i'm gonna regret doing this people are gonna do it <laughs> i hope they do i'm actually gonna tweet it out from the things that hey reminder after you see an end game Hit up Greg with all your... I'm literally going to turn my notifications off. (laughs) That doesn't mean you won't get it. Uh, No, I'm going to flip. I'm just going to stay on the uh, K Outcast pod, and then I just won't flip over to my actual personal account. Godspeed, Greg. Godspeed.